Yeah. Let me show you what the superficial will do. And then I'm going to show you what the spiritual will do. Y'all with me? Yeah. Superficial people who walk with you and be all in your face. See, listen, can I just tell you like this? Everyone in your face ain't your friend. Yeah. Come on, help me. Some of the folk that you ride around like a taxi, yeah. going to the mall, eating under your table, yeah. you got to buy something to eat every time y'all go somewhere. Yeah. Some of them folk ain't your friends. Yeah. They are really silent haters. Yeah. But since they are being blessed by being around you, they don't express their hateration. Uh-huh. And what happens is when you fall, they express, good God Almighty, their hateration in blaming you. They really they really been wanting to say something about you all the time. But they couldn't come out because they would have been condemned with their own words. And so now they can talk about your fall. I knew something was wrong with you. She thinks she all that. I knew something wrong with her girl. I just couldn't put my finger on it. Help me something. And so the superficial folk mm, are a tough group to deal with. Watch this. The spiritual will enclose. But the superficial is wrong with us? What is it that is in us that somehow gets joy out of seeing someone else hurt? What is it that when someone is fallen and embarrassed and their personal life has become a public matter. Why do we take joy in someone else's fall? See, spiritual people will enclose you. So look now, I, I, I got you covered, but now you're going to have to stop doing this. You have to fool. But I got you. As a matter of fact, when someone else will come nose along, you tell them, give me 50 feet. That's my brother, that's my sister. You can't talk about him, you can't talk about her. Yeah. You will protect them while they are falling. You won't try to uncover them. You won't try to put them on the internet. Yeah. You won't call everybody else in the church. Yeah. You won't call everybody else in the choir, in the usher ministry. Yeah. Come on, come on. You will enclose them.
Y'all like westerns? Where I get trained and Bonanza? Talk about that to somebody. Y'all like westerns? You remember any of those westerns where many times the cowboys who were, who were rusting cattle had to many times take the cattle through hostile territory? Because Little Joe and Blackfoot <laughs> would try to catch them and scalp them. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They didn't take their cattle. Every now and then, while going across rough terrain, since there were no asphalt, there was no concrete, since there was no, good God Almighty, any kind of streets like that, it was all rocky terrain. And every now and then, while riding, trying to get through hostile territory, in the territory, every now and then, a wagon wheel would hit a rock and bust, yeah. or just come off. Yeah. Then the last wagon in the, in, the, in the caravan would blow the bugle to signify to the front wagon that we got a wagon in trouble. And so what the lead wagon would do would locate the enemy and then turn into the enemy. But turn into the enemy and encircle the one wagon that had a wheel broke. Y'all ain't with me. And they would fire out from that circle out to the enemy to protect that one wagon whose wheel was broke. They would not let the enemy attack them, would not let the enemy be successful at getting to them because they were a part of the caravan. And after that wagon got his wheel back home, they would straight that caravan back out and get crossed in the territory. Now why can't we do that as a household of faith? There are some of us, the bugle is blown, but we just keep on riding. We say stuff like, better than than me. But watch this. If you go out there on your own, There's going to be a rock out there for your wagon wheel. Yeah. And because you have left the group, yeah. there is, come on, you out there by yourself, and there is no one out there to encircle you. Yeah. And put, I can't hear nobody now. And protect you. If you are spiritual, you are in clothes. But if you are superficial, you are exposed. Let me go and get through this little message before y'all hang up on me. Watch this. Watch this, y'all. Listen to this. In verse 1, restore to such a one spirit in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself. Wow. So the first thing that we should do, watch this, it says, ye which are, are spiritual, restore. Yeah. What, what we should do is restore a fallen brother. Yeah. Write that down, that's point number one. We should restore a fallen brother, but, and, and this, this verse catches the, the connotation of a person who has fallen, and when they fall, they broke something. Yeah. Yeah. And since they are fallen, our responsibility as spiritual is to go to them and firmly but gently put that broken bone back into place and then lift them to their previous level of usefulness so that they can fulfill their God-given purpose and realize their God-given destiny. Restore such a one. So we ought to restore a fallen brother, but then it says consider considering thyself, which means we ought to realize your own disorder. Yeah. Number two, restore a fallen brother, but then realize your disorder. There's some stuff about you that ain't quite right yet. There's still some bad thoughts that you ain't got on a subjection yet. There's still some bad habits and some bad ways and some bad words that you still say. You ain't set them up in a new prospect, but you see them on the porch. 
You left them out there in the car. They waiting on you when you get back in there. You're going to pick up your regular language that you, come on somebody, that you see all.